Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. DJ Envy is off today. One of my favorite folks is here, man. He is at the Cherry Lane Theater for what seems like a whole month doing his new special. I would, I'm assuming yeah, it's going to yeah. be a special. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Unacceptable. Neil Brennan is here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I I think Angela's over this show because I just said I'm I'm so happy to be here, and she goes, "Why?" I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I never think that in the morning when yeah. I get here. <laughs> like I don't know because it's a cool place to hang out and discuss things. <laughs> is that you a telltale know? sign somebody's over something? Yeah, this is not. <laughs> I was waiting for the punchline. Yeah, just put your notice in, ye. Just let, <laughs> Just tell people you're leaving. Look around. Do you, let me ask you this, because as somebody who comes in here every day, I feel a little numb to what the studio looks like. But when you look around, does this look like a clean environment? This is um, this is a, more of a crime scene <laughs> than a clean environment. It's getting a little uh, cluttered, but I'm, I like clutter. Me too. You guys get a lot of free stuff. You're a in lot. a tough position because you can't throw it away. That's right. So you kind of got to go, ah, we're going to feature it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna feature it in the studio somewhere. It just looks like a looks. It's starting to look like uh, Fred Sanford's junkyard. Yeah, That's what we do. Quarters. And then every month or so, like especially when interns were here, let interns go through stuff. Take oh what yeah, they enjoy want. yourself. And That's they're like, right. thank you so much. And you're like, please take That's it. That's right. <laughs> please get rid of it for me. That's right. Now, unacceptable, man. Yes. Why? Why that name? You know, uh, it's the show's basically about just the ways in which I don't really do the stuff you're supposed to do. Like I don't really drink. Don't really smoke weed. Not married, that's the big one. Not married, don't have kids, and I'm I'm old. Uh, so it's just the ways in which I do more uh, black talk shows than white. Yeah. Uh, just the ways in which I don't quite fit in the stuff. So you're unacceptable to who? Because I mean, you present as an undercover cop. Like if you came, around, <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> you know what's funny? The undercover cop thing. When people think showbiz, like. You know, I've seen cocaine maybe five times in my life. Like, really? I have a... Do, people never... I'm so insulted by the fact that no one ever offers me cocaine. <laughs> no one I, ever offers me cocaine. Is that... Have you... <laughs> Only one time ever. Yeah, isn't it... I I've, no Chicago, one's ever offered... Yeah. Tell me more. I didn't even know the woman. <laughs> she was an older white lady. She came over to me, and she goes, you like to party? And mm. I didn't know what she was talking about. I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm at one, I guess I, I mean, do. Yeah. That's the line, too. You like to party? I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. And then she was like, no, you like to party party. And I was like, um, I didn't know what she was propositioning. And then she said, look, do you like cocaine? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, I'm okay, thank you. Like, oh, it's like a sitcom? Like, so, what do we, oh, yeah. Um, only uh, five times in Hollywood? Uh, yeah, I think I've. I, I'm gonna be honest. I did it one time. You okay. did? Yeah, it did was you, fine. You snorted or you smoked or you? I snort. Yeah, I snorted it. You know when I did it? I after my first Comedy Central special, uh, I because I grew up in the time of like Len Bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I just thought if you if if I do cocaine, I'm absolutely gonna have a heart have attack, a heart attack and, die. and die. Yeah. And uh, and then I thought I did a Comedy Central. I was like, all right, I've done a hour Comedy Special. Now I'll do it, and if I die, it'll be hilarious. Yeah. How was and it? It was okay. Mm -hmm. I gotta gotta say, I didn't really understand why it got, why it's so popular. I never sniffed it. I smoked it once in a blunt with some weed by accident. And he better and worse. I thought it was amazing. It was the most amazing I ever. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I never done it again. I never did it again. Well, maybe what, you didn't. I might enough. by accident. What would it take for you to do it again? Nothing, because I didn't do it on purpose. Then, him. like, so no, yeah. like, if I did it knowingly, I would be like you. My anxiety would make me feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack and die. Because weed, yeah. weed, unless it's indigo, already gives me anxiety attacks. So I can only imagine at my age doing that now with coke and three kids and a wife and a life. Oh, I'd probably yeah stress myself out so bad. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm still open to it. To be honest, <laughs> right. if anyone's out there and you see me. So it didn't just, do anything to you? It was like, I was a little drunk already. So it was like, it gave me a little something. Mm -hmm. But it was, I, apparently that's why most people do it. It's like just to. It's a bump. Yes. To, Neil, yes. this conversation is unacceptable for the radio. I know. This okay, is kids not are correct. listening. Yeah, no, it's early no. in the morning. Um, <laughs> We're talking about the yeah, joy no, of the cocaine use. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, I've never done, uh, weed doesn't really work on me. I like shrooms. Um, but anyway, back to the show. Uh, so I don't. So Wait, I'm not done much. with this cocaine thing. I know it's it's exciting. Did you, was like, it? Did you microdose it? You know how like the first time you do something, you don't want to take too much, but maybe you didn't do enough. That's funny. If that that became like a mental health thing, like I microdose <laughs> cocaine. Um, 
like. I'm doing a lot of microdosing cocaine. Yeah, they just, do that for heroin. He's just just slowly, the doctor name. slowly turning into a crackhead. <laughs> so I still, I see you're still microdosing. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, uh, I just did two bumps. It was in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it felt like all right. I'll still, uh, like I said, still open to it. Okay. So you um, must have liked it. It was all right. Okay, okay. Yeah, but it wasn't like. I am I'm gonna let this ruin my life. Like it is a fit I have found my thing, it's over. It's just like, okay. It would be great if you could do it. Well, Carl Hart was in here. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Dr. Yeah. Carl Hart. He microdoses heroin. Yeah, which you guys kinda gave him a hard time. But um but uh but yeah, the the uh I wish I could do it, I just don't have access to it. No, you don't. Oh my Neil. gosh. Stop. You, you don't want to do that. All right. No, you don't. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys are you're the boss. <laughs> what is awesome unacceptable one. to you, Neil? <laughs> At this point in your life. Well, at this point, well, I don't, the, 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 it's more about what people want you to do. Like they, people really want you to just get into, they want you to get married. For women, it must be worse. Are you married? Yeah, I was going to, no, I'm not. And I don't have kids. That's what I was going to ask you about that. No, well, that's what, when, when you're a woman, they, I think they pity you, right? Yeah, they act like your life can't possibly be complete. If, yes. Yeah. And so I always feel like with men, y'all have a lot more time to do that. Like, really, I feel like for... I'm married. Oh. I feel uh, like for a man, pretty good, pretty in a way, you're man kind of like a way. prize if you are not married with kids. Yeah. I Well, I, I do a joke that it when you're a woman, they pity you, and when you're a guy, they're suspicious of you. Like I, <laughs> that's true. I would get more trust from women if I'd been married and murdered my wife, because then they'd be like, "No, he's capable of love. He just gets too passionate." Whereas now, it's like because I haven't ever done it, it's like, "What's wrong with you?" And they can't imagine that I just haven't met the right person to marry yet. And they probably just assume you're gay. At this point. Yeah. Just because of the, the era that we're in. I guess. I don't. Uh, that's another thing. I don't get I don't get very many gay propositions either. Mm-hmm. No, really? Yeah, Do you no, go out? Really? Um, I, go, I hit the gay clubs pretty seriously. And no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't get a lot of gay propositions. I don't. I guess I don't go out much. Cause yeah, I don't, how is anybody going to proposition you I guess, if you well, don't go out? Well, they DM me. <laughs> um, pretty, gee, open your eyes. They get DM. Him. DM do you, him. Do you get a lot of DMs? Uh, no, I actually don't get a lot of. I get like weird, creepy ones. Like I really want to eat your ass and stuff like that, and I just ignore those. What are the creepy ones? I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, that I always want. I wonder. You're a hard. I, you seem like a kind of. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes. Does he know you like him? <laughs> you yeah. seem like the kind of person who you could date for three years before you were like, I think she likes me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not more like, really yeah, we're like sure. friends. I'm like his homeboy. <laughs> yeah. And what are you, how are you doing with the sex? It's good. It's still active and stuff? Sometimes. It depends. You know what my biggest problem is? A, it's long distance. And B, oh. it's also because I wake up so early in the morning that sometimes our schedules don't mesh. And so I'm sometimes ready to go to bed. So if you don't get in there like quick, I'll fall asleep. Uh, yeah, I got well. Girls are like that. Girls will fall asleep at like seven fifteen. Well, we pretend we're asleep. Yeah. Oh wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I always wonder about you, Yee. I think about Yee a lot. <laughs> Maybe you should DM her. I should DM her. I'm, hey, I'll, hey, it's Neil. Okay. I'll eat your ass. <laughs> Do you like to party? <laughs> yeah, you like to party? I got two questions. You like to party, and you want me to eat your ass. <laughs> How often do you do shrooms? Um, you know what's great? This is I the <laughs> level of fame I'm at. Somebody sent me just a bunch of shrooms. Really? That's the nicest thing I've gotten from not the nicest thing I've gotten. Obviously money would be the nicest thing I've gotten, but uh, the, I, there's just a guy who sends me shrooms and microdoses and that's like it's beautiful. Um, I my, I like microdosing shrooms, but I get toward the end of the day I get a little spacey. Mm-hmm. And cuz I got to go uh, do stand up? I can't really be sort of forgetting mm-hmm. at eight o'clock. I want to do shrooms, but I don't want to do them in America. I want to do them in like out of the country in like nature somewhere. You've still never done shrooms? No, nah, I was supposed to do it. Uh, I was actually going to do it over New Year's in Kabul. Like we had the whole spiritual ceremony and we blessed the room and everything, much. the fire ceremony, and then I got scared at the last minute. Listen, you know, oh, you, you told me you were going to do it. Yeah, and then you yeah, didn't yeah do I punked it? out. We yeah. have did they nature do it? here yeah, in America that you could be out in. You don't have to lead a country. Yeah, you know they got true. forests here. <laughs> <laughs> you could really go. You have a backyard. Yeah, I'm it's sure. wild. Yeah, what yeah, you yeah, can yeah. Do. It's called New Jersey. <laughs> 
You'll go out there. It's not all concrete. You'll get used to it. I want like a beast though. Oh, you're right though. You're right. I'm a, I, I do want to try it though. I ain't want to do ayahuasca. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. I told you about ayahuasca. Yes. Ayahuasca. I did, uh, and I've done it a bunch of times now. That was. I'm not even gonna front that. I was an atheist, and I took ayahuasca, and I. Uh, am no longer an atheist. T- explain. I need to hear more of this story, Neil. Wow. You yeah, need to hear this, this is a big one. Like, this is almost like wow. I can't talk about it on the radio. Okay. Um, basically, your ayahuasca is, it's not, it's like a, it's like a, you know, I, I, it's plant medicine, right? That's what they call it. They mm-hmm. call it mushrooms and weed plant medicine. And now they call, I mean, ayahuasca is the original plant medicine. It's, uh, it's from the Amazon It's the cultures around the Amazon have been doing it for thousands of years, right? Mm -hmm. And it is a god hack. In my experience, it is a god hack. So you saw God or you hear him? Here's what, okay. There was a point where, you know the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, the movie, where before their faces melt, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when the angels are flying around? Mm -hmm. I basically was like, oh, this is that. Wow. I'm in I'm experiencing a connection to a to the central beam. Wow. Yeah, like literally like ultralight beam where I was like, oh, wow. this is I did it with Rock Chris talked about it, right? Mm-hmm. He had an experience. I don't, all I'm going to say is that motherfucker sobbed for 7 hours straight. Wow. Damn. Like it was it was wild. See, I'm into that. I, if, if, if I'm going to do plant-based medicine, I want to feel those kind of spiritual It's the most profound experience I've ever had. And you have to wow. have a shaman there, right? You have, yeah, you got to have a shaman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you got to have a good shaman, as a matter of fact. Like, don't, because I've had a, I've had like a rickety shaman <laughs> and a good what shaman. What makes it unrickety? <laughs> uh, I can't even get into it. Um, <laughs> Uh, rickety shaman sounds. Yeah, rickety wow. shaman. That's what he, you know what? Have you heard rickety shaman's mixtape? <laughs> rickety shaman has some hot. He got joints on there, man. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I if you can uh, experience ayahuasca, do it. It is. Um, it's a and the person who told me about it, I had he he didn't know I'd done it. I and I texted him. I was like, you know, I've done it a bunch of times now, and and. He called me on the phone, and I said, yo, you didn't tell me it was a uh, a God portal. Wow. And he's like, I couldn't. And I go, why not? And he goes, because you wouldn't have believed me, and you wouldn't have done it. Wow. So it, it truly, I truly went, it was like I had a, I had a God, I had a, it's the only spiritual experience I've ever had. So and you I, never felt God before that, ever? Because I grew up Catholic, so it's like, the, it's just, you're just, all you get are rules. Does it happen every time? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that's interesting what you just said because you're describing religion versus spirituality. Yes. Yeah. It's not about, uh, in my experience, Catholicism was never about uh, what I experienced with, with ayahuasca. It was about rules and don't touch your dick and <laughs> let the priest do that. Um, uh, that's what priests are for. Uh, yeah, just like don't, like just rules and like you shall not. Sh- shall not and you should not just all these not not nots and uh spare the rod spoil the child which is the bible's way of saying hey child abuse thumbs up yeah uh just all these crazy discipline things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this was about a non-judgmental i i'm a better person for having done it and like i i, I was driving in LA at night one time recently and i Saw a homeless guy um, pushing himself up a hill in a wheelchair, and I just pulled over and was like, "Hey, man, you need help?" Not for good boy points. Not like, "Hey, God." Mm-hmm. It was just because, like, I couldn't not help yeah. the dude. Stuff like that. Like, it. It's a very. I'm a better person for having done it. And here's one you're gonna like. Haven't taken antidepressants since. Really? Well, that's amazing. Yeah, like it's so. I don't. I'm not here. Wow. I'm. Look, go to unacceptableshow.com for my show. But, uh, but this is a this is a big thing. Do you pray now? I I yeah. I I don't pray. I every morning. I didn't do it this morning. Um, but every morning I try to connect 
to uh, that I am a sliver of this infinite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. all are. Like, yeah. it, and it makes it easy. It just makes it, I, don't, I see you as like a sliver. You're like, oh, we're just all, we're all part little of the slivers of, the, yeah. of this central beam. And, and again, I'm glad people knew me before this. Because <laughs> this is not what I was, I'm not like I'm a like markedly different person. But, but talking like this is... So if you can get it, get it. But it, I heard it makes you shit on yourself, though, potentially. That's the thing. People go like, did you puke? Think about the millions of people who puke from alcohol every night. <laughs> millions With no every night. Experience. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then people are like, I heard it makes you puke. Have you heard of alcohol? <laughs> Dog, is like, a, it is a terrible, but, de- but does it? Because I know Chelsea I've Handler only, did the oh, Chelsea uh, does drugs. I puked once with a rickety shaman. <laughs> that's why I pu- I just I drank too much and I had and rickety shaman didn't stop me and um, and I and I puked but I normally I'm just it's pretty chill okay yeah you mean like, you drink too much ayahuasca yeah okay okay wow I can't wait to do it I'm doing it. yeah dude I, I mean like I would if you want to bypass it if you want to bypass shrooms and all that stuff like it makes shrooms look like um like like pop rocks yeah like it's just it's 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 is a profound it's just the most profound thing that's ever happened i need to do it i need to do it um yeah when's the last time you went somewhere and felt like you didn't fit in like in a social setting i most social settings i don't quite have social anxiety but I, i i do a joke in the show most social interactions i have feel like when you go to throw away garbage but it's in one of those cans it's got like a garbage hole and a recycling hole and a compost hole and you kind of just like guess and then you walk away like oh i don't think i did that right (laughs) that's how most of my interactions feel i feel like everyone's i'm gonna get in trouble i fucked up somehow yeah i i I do a joke where i'm like my i'm afraid my final thought on earth is gonna be is that nurse mad at me (laughs) like i'm just constantly think everyone's mad at me and I'm wrong, and I have a very, I think I read as, as a, obviously, undercover cop, but as, like, a um, competent, confident person, but I, inside, I'm like, oh, she's mad. You walk, when you walked out to go to the bathroom, you're literally just in your life, right? And you're mm-hmm. like, good morning. And I'm like, you don't like me. <laughs> that's, but isn't the, that's anxiety. Is that what it is? I, yeah, I think so, for me. <laughs> Yeah, or but paranoia. I deal, with, yeah, par- I deal with a lot of imposter syndrome, yeah. you know, insecurities, all of that. But, you know, that's just us in our own heads. Yeah, and I don't know how to get over it because it's getting to the point where it's like, I'm I, like I'm 47, man. Like, when is this going <laughs> to... When am I... <laughs> Like, when is the awakening going to happen where I'm like, all right, you know, I got older. I'm like older and exactly the way I was when I was like nine. I think the biggest lie we've been telling ourselves for years is that we nobody cares about the opinions of other people. Oh, That's a lie. Now, I, how you let those opinions affect you is different, but do you care? You do for a moment. Yeah, like there's an old Groucho Marx line. I, I, I wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would have me and it's like no i want to be in i want to be in the club <laughs> like please sir like every club i want everything is like a velvet rope and yeah. i'm like what's going on back there can i why can't i come in like ev- just about every situation i have how about you um, um no i think i'm pretty good because i forget everything real quick so <laughs> i leave somewhere and i could be like damn did i do the wrong thing and then i forget about it like five minutes later well that yeah that is the thing where people you forget that most people's life is just a bunch of shit rushing past people. Mm-hmm. Whereas we think like, they're thinking about me. Mm-hmm. All right, not. No, no one's thinking about no. me. Has exactly. that happened to you though, where you actually have <clears throat> made somebody mad or said the wrong thing? Or- I have a, you know what's an interesting, this is an interesting, uh, so this is because I'm so old. I, You know what's funny is I still look relatively young, but my credits are getting so old. Like like half baked. Like didn't that come out 25 years ago? <laughs> yeah, that it was did. a long time ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after half baked, um, I I was supposed to write a movie with uh, Jim Brewer and Tracy Morgan, right? And or we I was not only was I supposed to I was writing a movie with them, and um, and it was not it was going okay, right? I'm like 23. It was the first thing I'd written after I baked, and uh, Brewer basically got me fired, right? And I like knew him, right? Wow, got me fired. And it was a 
psychologically like a major setback, like an obsessive point of uh, of of uh, like contempt in my life. Like I'm gonna get her. Um, probably 20 years later, I I didn't really I saw Brewer maybe two two or three times after that in the subsequent 20 years. See him at the Montreal Comedy Festival five years ago, and. I'm on the elevator with him, and he's like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" I'm like, "Good, Jim." Like, kind of cold. Still feel, you still yeah. angry? Yeah, yeah, yeah still yeah. mad. Yeah. <laughs> still mad. Yeah. And uh, but like hurt. You know what I mean? <laughs> like mad and hurt. And um, and so a mutual friend of ours, Tom Papa, a really great comedian, uh, was like, "Yeah, Brewer said you were kind of mean to him," and I was like, "Yeah, I was me. I was." And uh, and and so he like brokered a sit down, and Brewer's like, "What's going on?" I go, "Jim." We were writing a movie together, and you got me fired from like a Universal Studios movie. You got me fired, and he goes, "I did." <laughs> he had no memory of it. Meanwhile, I'm obsessed about it. Years. Nothing happened to the script. I'm literally thinking about it every day, and he had no recollection <laughs> that it had ever happened. Which is felt feels like a, a the story of like life. Yeah. You're like this thing that you think is uh, and nobody nobody's even. thinking about it. But I guess no. it happened to you, so it's different. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Like what I I hit you. It's like basically Rick James going like I hit you tonight. That <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. Like just people don't remember <laughs> that they when you're the offensive person, I get or the 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 aggressive person, you don't remember. But that always felt like a good illustration of how little people. Are thinking about you. So what happened with the movie? Now I need to know. <laughs> like why? Nothing. It, it just nothing. like nothing happened. Most movies, yeah. like one out of a hundred get made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. just one of them that just didn't. Another one just goes into the, just the big vault. You know, I wanted to ask you, how can you, how can any comedian, especially you, make fun of anything on this planet right now when the comedy seems to write itself? It seems like real life is funnier than anything a comic could actually write. It's not. It's well, yeah, it is, but it's also. It's it's more weird. Mm -hmm. It's so weird that like with COVID, like one like COVID being the main thing everybody talks about, the fact that people have opinions about facts, like how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Where it used to be, there were opinions and facts, and then they became around the same amount of valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sciences, people scoff at science. All these people would have been like. Burning people with torches in the in the Middle Ages, like it's the same idea. Mm -hmm. Like Copernicus, get him! Like, yeah. Um, the, I think there was because there was a time where news outlets only could really report facts as far as we knew, so there was no yes. other means. Of I information have a whole or theory. Basically, what happened was there was there had there was there were news departments of networks, and they were mandated by the government. Mm -hmm. They had to do like two hours a week of like informational content mm -hmm. right and at in the 80s late 80s early 90s they got rid of the law so then they all these news uh channel the news like the news divisions became profit centers for the networks mm -hmm. so it just became about entertainment that's right cnn cnn can't CNN has to do those those uh, talking head shows mm -hmm. every night at 8 and 9 and 10 because they can't sell ads on well, whatever happens, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Right. So if there's an earthquake, yeah, it's gonna get good ratings. If there's not an earthquake, ah, uh, we're just gonna be checking in down on the street. Absolutely. Um, so they have to have the talking head shows, and then it just becomes entertainment. And I hate those because I hate how they ask questions. I hate how they'll come on and say, "Is the vaccine safe?" with a question mark. Yes. No, I, you're the news. You are, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> why are you asking safe. me? Why are you asking yeah, us? like, what do you think, America? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you think? It's like restaurants going like, why don't you come in and cook? What do you want to? What Absolutely. do you want a restaurant? Fucking do your job. But yeah. it feels like the information though facts seem like they change a lot too. Well, COVID has been like, uh, they it's a new thing, mm -hmm. so they're trying to they're trying to catch up to it. But it sounds like a lot like somebody trying to get their story worked out. <laughs> they're like, all right, okay, what I said about masks. That was true when I said it. 
Like a Absolute. dude who got caught cheating. Yes, like, yes. No. Now look. No, I did not say that. <laughs> I no, I did not say that you needed to wear two masks. I needed. I said you need to wear eight, eight N95. That's right. Um, so, but it does make people who don't want to do stuff. It gives them ammunition. Like I got a buddy who, who. It's just, it, but one of my friends like, you know, yeah, I just think they rushed the vaccine. I'm like, I didn't know you're an epidemiologist. <laughs> Hilarious. I thought you worked in telemarketing. <laughs> um, another friend is like, uh, yeah, I, I'm not taking it. I go, why not? He goes, I just don't want to mess with my DNA like that. I was like, you know, Greg, I've met your family. <laughs> I think you can go ahead and risk your DNA. It's not that, it's not, the, the DNA, to be honest, not that valuable from what I can tell. Go ahead and see what, it's like banging a broken TV on the side. Let's see what comes up. So you took the vaccine. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. Okay. I, it's not, as a white person, it's not that controversial. Explain. Uh, you you saw the stat the in New York City, uh, the black vaccination rates twenty three percent. Yes. So like so it became a thing and 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 I think black people's approach is if a white person's an anti vaxxer I'm like you're a moron and if a black person's an anti vaxxer I'm like you totally brother understand. brother did his research that's right <laughs> he that's really right. he figured it out he looked that's at right. I I don't I think uh, uh, that the vaccines are safe. They've given out five billion of them now. Mm-hmm. Five billion throughout the world. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot. Like yeah. we would have heard some bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And and if you think it's a conspiracy, fine. But the a year ago everybody thought it was a conspiracy that China had invented this virus. Mm-hmm. So it's like which conspiracy? Basically, people are going like, "No, nah, I'm going to ride with China. <laughs> I'm going to ride with Chinese. I'm going to I'm going to ride with their virus. I've always they've always been good to me, the Chinese." <laughs> Um, so it's, I, I, I get the, the defensiveness and the lack of trust, but it's just killing, it's just killed, you know, it's killed 5 million people and the vaccines killed not from what I can tell, none. Mm-hmm. I've heard none. I'm sure it's There's a some thousand. some cases, but they're Well, no, but it, that's not, but that's not the vaccine killing people. That's like, you can still die if you get Oh vaccinated. yeah, I got you, got you, got you. My fault. Like not You're just right. like they took the vaccine yeah, 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 yeah. fell out. So people I, have just had some adverse reactions, but I think that's with anything. Like there will be some yeah. people who have a bad reaction because it can cause. Yeah, to, to, again, mm-hmm. alcohol, for instance. <laughs> think about all the bad. Why did you reactions. give up drinking? I actually had a beer last night. I just don't drink <laughs> a just lot. Said you don't drink. I'm, I'm, yeah, look, guys, I'm, I'm full of shit. And everything you sound like I, the CDC. Everything I say is like I did not say I don't drink. What I said was wear that. a mask. If you're gonna drink, use a filter. Um, <laughs> Uh, I drink a little bit, but uh, but I'm saying when when uh, yeah, people have adverse reactions to everything, right? The food poisoning, like yeah, this, like this, but they it became a thing to look like you're you don't fuck with the government. I, I get it; it's just more cultural than it is scientific, and it's a it's a bummer because you don't I don't people should I don't want people to die, but I understand that in this culture it's kind of the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah. Did you choose which vaccination you wanted? Um. I I have a, a vaccine sommelier. What who, is that? They, uh, <laughs> no, it's well, a like gentleman that I paid to test all the vaccines for me, like a te- <laughs> like a like a food tester. In the, okay. For the like, a, is he good? He's a rickety. Like, you got a rickety no, he's sommelier? a rickety food tester. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's like uh, you know a dictator has a guy test food so it's not poison. Who gets treated worse, the unmarried and unvaccinated? Oh, Charlemagne. <laughs> uh, the unmarried. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> again, some people will say, "God." The thing with being unmarried is. Guys can't say uh, in front of their wives, like, good for you. But on the side, they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, doing, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've had so many guys, like, whisper to me, like, don't get married unless you want to have kids. <laughs> like, uh, like ventriloquists. Like, don't. Like, there's no purpose in getting married unless you want to have kids. It's so, so funny because my friends who are, like, um, not in great marriages or who are divorced now. You mean all your friends? Who's in a good marriage? <laughs> Me. I believe you're in a good I, I really married. believe it. I really believe it. I wish your wife felt the same and way. too. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I think probably more people are not than are. I would say that. Are not in a good marriage I would than say at like marriages that I aspire to, 15%, mm-hmm. 10%. And most of them are just kind of look like uh, 
bad. I mean, I, the joke I do is like, if you ask women how marriage is, they talk like a politician who's trying to duck a scandal. Where you go, hey, Lisa, how are things with you and Mike? And they'll go like, kids are great. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> kids are great? See everybody at the polls November 4th. And then guys, uh, you ask a guy how it is, and it's like he's reading a hostage letter. <laughs> They're like, hey, hey, Mike, how are things with you and Lisa? And he's like, hello, I am happy. Do not worry about me. <laughs> like it's it's so there's no one where I'm like I want yeah. that. Right. It's always like uh, it's sort of limping along, doing like rickety shaman, like going along, <laughs> doing their best, making the best of a bad situation. Yeah. Have you ever thought you got somebody pregnant? You know what's interesting, Angela? Um, I I yeah I've had some some. Scares just right. The fact that they call them scares I know, I like, lets you know people don't want to have kids. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I had a scare. Like that's <laughs> pregnancy scare. Yeah, I'm pregnancy scared. Like so. Uh, yeah, I've I've had some like some late some late um late texts. Mm -hmm. um, What's scary? A pregnancy scares or COVID scares? <laughs> I had a COVID scare. I had a I had a positive. What's funny is I had a positive that ended up being false. But when I when I got the positive. I immediately was like, oh, I don't feel well. <laughs> and I like passed out for five hours. <laughs> like, oh, I've got so, I knew it. I, this, it's finally going to get me. And then they're like, it's, it's, it's negative. I was like, oh, all right, what was that? And then when I got the vaccine, I was fine. Right. So I had no side effects from the vaccine. Yeah. But, but when but, you get those texts like, I'm late, right? What, were you ever Well, the like, first thought excited? is like, well, then I'm going to have to murder you. No. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to have you uh, the Well, challenge. I guess I'll have to call the goons. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> the crate yeah. challenge, you said? Yeah. No. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> no, you I'll call the said, goons. do the crate challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to have you. Um, <laughs> by the way, I've, take, I've uh, taken all my money out of Bitcoin and put it into milk crates. So <laughs> I hope, Smart. I hope, look, um, have you, I've, I've yet to see a bad uh, crate challenge video. I got to stop watching them. Every one of them's good. Yeah. Every they are all a little masterpiece. Every single one, because every fall is different, and they all look painful. Every single one of them well, looks TikTok's painful. TikTok's taking them all down. Is that true? Yeah. What? Why? I have. They say because it it's dangerous. I don't understand all the conspiracy theorists that have so much to say about the vaccine, but not about the crate challenge. Is that not social engineering? Who the hell started that and got everybody doing it in a week? Well, it is some. It feels <laughs> like uh, like uh, the. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's an amazing, I, it's just an amazing thing. Did it run I, through your mind like, I could do that? Well, yeah, of course, everybody goes, well, I, I think I could do it. <laughs> My favorite is the one from the, when they go to the top and they fall all the way down on the top Horrible. rung. I call that the penny from good times where she fell through the elevator shaft. <laughs> this from the top floor, from the penthouse to the basement. <laughs> She's like, bang! I forgot Penny fell. Penny from yeah, Penny, shaft. she fell in the elevator shaft. It and broke a, her arm. Yeah, it was a it was a cliffhanger. <laughs> You're just joining us. We're very old. And there was a show called Good Times, where J a young Janet Jackson was uh, was uh, <sighs> abused. A, a, she was an abuse. That yeah. was the first abused storyline that I can like remember. Me too. Same. Um, it yeah. was they heard with they popped her with an iron, right? Burned her with an iron, her mom. Yep. That was the first abuse story like I can remember. Then then Al Bundy. What? Al Bundy was definitely abused. Oh, he was getting abused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah by yeah, Peg, yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. They didn't talk about a hostage note. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh he was not in good shape. <laughs> um you know, you're one of the only people that really comedians that I guess not gonna say only, but that talk about mental health. He was doing it way before it was even I popular was saying, to do. You and me. It's like the list of people that talk about it's very less in public. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you, yeah. me, Kevin Love, Demar Derozan. Yeah. It's like a not a long list. Yeah. And it's especially I'm, men. Yeah, of course. Um, it's it's I I just have no shame about it. Mm -hmm. I have no I'm like yeah I take antidepressants I take like I'm it's like having high blood pressure or something just like something that happened to me. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's good though, because I mean, because of those conversations, you're one of the people that started getting me to go to therapy. Just hearing you talk about CBT oh, that's and everything, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, just I'm being so open glad. about it, I'm like, hmm, let yeah. me try that. Look, if Neil can do it, I yeah, can yeah, too. Yeah, but you see the amount of DMs and messages you get of people going like, because of you, I absolutely, I started, and it's 
I mean, I ye, we're out here saving lives. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're doing. But me and Charlemagne saved over 800 young men last year. Um, do, do you think mental health is, is supplemental or detrimental to comedians? I think it's I think it's supplemental because I don't. What I've realized is my the joke writing instinct is just it's like a reflex at this mm-hmm. point. Like I don't I don't. It's you know it's I I I I've written great stuff on antidepressants. I've written great stuff not on antidepressants. It's just a thing I am, and uh, whether it's I just want to feel as good as I can feel. Right. And if even if it meant I don't get to be a comedian anymore. You know what really? I mean? Like I'd rather be happy than uh, whatever I am I as a, a, a career-wise. Like, yeah. like I, that may be easier for me to say because I, 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 you know, I did okay on on. I've done okay, mm-hmm. right? So I could potentially, you know, just open a dry cleaner or something. But, but uh, the my mental health and feeling good means more to me than kind of anything. Like I don't. Like my career is important, and I, but that's more. I agree with you. The, but with career stuff, don't you find like that? It's that's a that's a that's a lot of ego and comparison, and why are they getting that, and why mm-hmm. am I not getting that? And whereas mental health is like, it's about tuning into yourself. That's right. And and it's not. I mean, it is about like they seem happier. What are you doing? But it's not like I'm gonna take. I'm I'm gonna beat your happiness record. It's it's not like. Their 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 level of existence better than mine. It's just like oh they seem happy that's good. There's no pettiness to it. What kind of space were you in when you wrote unacceptable? Well, unacceptable. I'd written a bunch of jokes, and I was looking at them, and I was like, what am I getting at? Mm-hmm. And what I realized I was getting at was just defending my worldview, de- de- defending the fact that like why don't I want to get married? Why don't I want to have kids? Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't I drink? Why don't I do drugs? You do uh, drink. I, uh, fuck, fuck you. And you do do Would drugs. Would you stop listening <laughs> you <just> to me? <laughs> <laughs> Would you stop taking me at my word? Christ. Uh, I'm so sick of it. Every time. Uh, I have a whole hunk about being a bad liberal. Like I'm a liberal, but as a liberal, you can never be good enough. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. there's just no amount that's good it's enough. It's unsustainable. Yeah, it's like they're just... It's their fault, though. They, 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 everybody talks about these Republicans who became Trump supporters and how warped they are. Liberalism got very warped over the last four or five it's, years, too. It's so... War- I feel like the, if Republicans weren't out of their minds, there would be a lot more defectors. But there's really nowhere for liberals to go. Yeah. Like, there's just nowhere to go. Like, like the fact that there's... I, I do it where there's... Mo- I'm more afraid of liberals than I am of Republicans. Like they will snitch on you, like they. It's like East Germany where they're like, "We got Chrissy Teigen, good for you." Wow, you finally brought down criminal mastermind Chrissy Teigen, and before that, Kevin Hart, two of the fucking sweetest people on the planet, mm-hmm. and they're going after them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, uh, so, so, uh, and Kevin bought us these chairs, so we owe him. A, <laughs> We owe him a he lot. Did. I love Kev. Kev's the Kev's great. Um, He's a so great guy. He is a great guy. We tried to get him to get us laptops too. But... <laughs> you could. He would figure it out. He would. Can, can you be a successful comedian while working through trauma? Because it's easier for like a personality, right? Because all we do is come on here every day and talk about our experiences anyway. As a right. comedian, y'all got to build sets and everything else. Is that I possible? think you can. I mean, I don't. Uh, my, I you know uh, the the stuff. I guess I wrote it from a. A healthier place but it comes down I think you can start like I, I don't I think I can only get so fixed do you know what I mean mm. like I can get better but it's always gonna be some of this stuff is just in me some of like the the mental habits are just I'm and then some of it's just like if I look at a news story I'll just write a joke like just instant mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. so I think it's possible I think it's it's an old Sort of, I think it was the thing comedians said to not have to do, to not have to change. Like, I don't want to lose my, my mojo. I have to, I have to, uh, uh, you know, be a drug addict because otherwise I won't be funny. It's like, try it. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. just don't want to try it. Mm-hmm. I just think it's a fake, fake reason to, to not. But, you know, I, maybe I'm getting slowly less funny. 
<laughs> well, Do you watch other people's Audience, let, comments, let us know. Is let us know in the comments. Is huh? the first one since three mics? No. I did, uh, I did, it. oh, this, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. the special, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I did it last night, uh, first one, and it was, it went great. St- standing ovation. Wow. So, I can't you know, wait to but it was it. one of those slow standing ovations, it was like nine Perfect. seconds yeah. in. <laughs> it wasn't like, bah! Because they were looking around to see if anybody recorded before we applaud this <laughs> inappropriate this, Yeah, this shit. awfulness. <laughs> uh, Do you watch other stand- people's stand-ups? Yeah, I love stand-up. Mm-hmm. Like, I love stand-up. I really do. Like, I love, there are very few, I still, anything Dave puts out or Chris, like, I love, I go to clubs, watch, like, I lo- I grew up, my brother's a comedian, so I used to go to comedy clubs when I was in high school, and um, it's just, like, in me, I, I'm like a gym rat for comedy. Like, I love, I, like, I went and saw Mulaney's New Hour, mm-hmm. and Chris came to mine last night, and we're, it's like, you know, I love, there's a joke in the show that I called Dave and I was like, has anyone done this joke? And this, I called him it last year and mm-hmm. I go, has anyone done this joke? And he goes, you, you pitched me that joke in 1993. What? <laughs> like I, it's just been like, ra- like rattling around. Uh, so I love, yeah, like I'm not one of these. It, that's another one of them. I can't watch other comedians. It's like because you're you're selfish. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like oh, it's gonna get in my groundwater. And it's like no, I'm, you just. I'm glad Dave started a podcast. I haven't listened to. It. Isn't it good? I can't afford I, I Luminary. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> listened, I haven't listened to it, but I'm just glad he started one because, like, you know, they they were saying those last two things were specials, right? So oh, the expect- video. Yeah. So you're expecting stand up, but it's just Dave talking, and I'm yeah. like. This is cool, this is yeah. good, but you know, I can't say this is a stand-up special. I just it, went to his last. Um, he just taped his last stand-up special in Detroit. Oh, like a new yeah, hour? Last, yeah, mm-hmm. it uh, was, and it was definitely a full stand-up special. Like structured. You went, you mm-hmm. said. Oh, great! And yeah. it was. It turned out. Yeah, no, great. I thought it was amazing, and he's addressing a lot of things that's happening right now, as usual. So yeah, no, he's uh, he. It's with Dave. It's like, it's funny watching what was like basically like my roommate become the Dalai Lama. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like I know the dude so well. Like so well. And now it's like a deity. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah, like yeah. yeah. Like when I'm like in so proud of him and at the same time I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's like watching a guy become this thing in culture that is beyond and in but in some ways it's like was always gonna be that if you look back like he's uh, always the voice of reason right but it was like just a matter of t- he kind of had to like wait out culture it's like that joke i did on the mark twain tribute thing where it was like when when hbo passed on on a Chappelle show and and they were like we don't need you we have chris rock mm-hmm. and they because they could only have one black dude at a time mm. And whereas now they can have three, like I said. Um, so, so it's like he just had to wait out the kind of, kind of in a weird way, like white people's racism, to accept a different type of person and uh, a different kind of voice. And now he's like the. It's really cool. Does it affect you that he worked everything out with Comedy Central? Does that mean you get another check too? I, it, it. I'm very happy. That he got, he he worked it out. You look like you're being held hostage. <laughs> yeah. I am happy. You're happy in this marriage. Do not, Charlemagne, do not worry about me. <laughs> worry about yourself. Uh, I Read the note the way I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, they, are, they are giving us shelter. Um, I was always, I was getting, a, I had a piece of the show the whole time. So... Like I wasn't, I, he he left, so he was in breach of contract. Mm-hmm. I was not in breach of contract, so I was getting my cut, mm-hmm. so to speak, the whole time. I'm glad, it, but it, the good news is it doesn't affect. I don't get any less as a result. Okay, it's not like, well, oh, sorry, Dave. Yo, did you didn't talk to Dave? He just came here and took <laughs> all the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I'm lucky in that, like I've been able to to. Uh, but it's like steady. It's a steady decline. Really. Term- well, it, they because, run it all the time. I know, but it's just less valuable. It's like they, it's less value. It's just one of them things. It's like things get. It's just you know, look at your studio. Think uh, over time, <laughs> things. <laughs> look at this dump. Dan 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 it. Dan 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 it dan dan dan. Elizabeth, 
Um, uh, so, so, uh, so yeah, it just, it, 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 the value goes down, but it's still valuable and it's still like a nice thing. Cause I never know how much it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And it's twice a year. Like, okay. Still so, a nice check. Yeah. It's a nice check. Do you, do you ever regret ending the Champs podcast when you see all these big payday I, folks is getting you know, the podcast? I, like the Champs was I the abso- biggest I abso- shit I abso- out. I absolutely do. Okay. Because <laughs> the you were on it. Yeah. We introduced so many people. Yes. This is like the first Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. Jarrod was on the first. Like so many people. Disease. Chris was on it. Uh, and the amount of money we could make now doing it. <laughs> Uh, but it, but there were also no black people doing any pod. So like, it was the only way you could find black people on podcasts was yeah. as guests on the champs. So now it's a different story. So like, everybody's got a podcast. But um, I'm sure it would have evolved though. Yeah, I'm you sure it would have. But yeah, it was it was I it was fun to do because it was it was just like dudes that I knew were funny that people just didn't, and women that I knew were funny that people didn't know. Because so, I, I I remember I feel like champs was bigger than Rogan at one point. For a certain like percentage of a certain uh, type of person, mm-hmm. like your camera, your camera, cameraman. <laughs> um, I think it's true that you have white camera people. If there's something sort of you know dominant, domineering about it, would you ever are. bring it back? Or it's done. Uh, I think it's done. I, it's also just I couldn't. It was so hard to book people. Really? Now it'd be easier, but it was just a pain. It was a pain. Wow. Mm. Can you be can you be appropriate appropriate politically correct and funny at the same time? Yeah, I think you can. I mean, I think if you you can, the 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 hard thing is not not doing it in a way that's pandering to liberals. It's what Seth Meyers has termed the word clapter. Clapter meaning you make a you do a joke that's just pandering to liberals, and instead of laughing, oh, they just oh yeah 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 woo! yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like way that used to be like the America's the greatest country in the world. Woo! Yeah, 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 That's yeah. like Republican clapter, and um, and and with with stand up, you just pander to women, black people, any any marginalized group. You just go, you're the best. Mm-hmm. Woo! And now white people clap for it too because they have to they have to act like because the last summer they have to act like they've always they've been for black people the whole time. <laughs> what? I've been with black people the whole time. I think things are changing, though. I think they're going back to people wanting, like, real, honest, authentic opinions. I really do. Well, I, my question for you is, do you get stressed out from the... You you're, you guys are in the center of the storm a lot. Always. You know? Yeah, kind of always. And uh, does it not cause you personal anxiety? Yes, it it, it, it does. Um but, you know, one thing I've always said is you cannot have an opinion about things and expect to hear what you want to hear when you give that opinion. Everybody's right. not going to agree with you. Just like it might be people applauding, it's going to be people booing. So I, you can't live for the cheers. Because if you live for the cheers, you'll die by the booze. That's how I always feel. Well, I always know what my intentions are. And my intentions are never to hurt anybody when I give my opinion. True. Mm-hmm. And so for myself... I always feel like you can give your opinion as long as you can stand by it and explain why you feel the way that you feel. Uh, yeah, I- ideally. Ideally, right. Right. And then I know I, I know I'm not a person that's like I'm trying to do this to you know create controversy or hurt somebody. It's really how I feel, and so that makes me not get anxiety because it's just nothing I could do about it. No one's gonna. I mean, people can change your mind about things and educate you more about things, but I know I do my best. He is very right. Intention is important. You used to have a joke. Used to call certain comedians stool fuckers. Yeah, and I think some of these people with their opinions, they're stool fuckers. It's low hanging fruit. Like you're well, literally it's, it's fighting, the pandering, to yeah. offend people. That's yeah. whack. Yeah, um, it's the it's it's well, my question. But so, do you guys uh, have words muted on Twitter, Instagram, block stuff? Like, do you have a policy? Um. Yeah, I have certain things muted. I do. Ass, and I, I ass actually, eating. Do you yeah, ass eating. <laughs> Well, people still DM that to me, but I do like to restrict people so they don't know that they're blocked. Oh, so, like, yeah. Muting is great. Yeah, muting and restricting, I think, is amazing because then they can still, like, go crazy, but you just yeah. don't see it. It is a funny thing where they get to go crazy and you're just like, oh, I have, I have no I idea. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love I love it. I love muting people. I love blocking people. I thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, it's like they're, they're talking about you on 4th Street. And I'm I don't just even gonna, know. I'm on 6th Street. Word so. up. <laughs> I have no, but you have to do that for your own mental and emotional well-being in order to focus and stay doing what 
God has you here to do, you have to block out that noise. You have to. It's Yeah, it's just hard. It's hard, especially if you're, you like the uh, approval. No, I don't. I don't even go looking for it. Don't right. read, don't read the comments on YouTube. Don't read the comments on Instagram. Don't just work. Just do There's the work. There's so much stuff that I don't see and don't read. As somebody tweeted the other day, I know a lot of people don't like you, but I really support. What you're <laughs> I don't care what anybody and I says. Was like, oh, man. I didn't know that many people. Didn't <laughs> yeah. Like me. Somebody left a comment this morning on Instagram and said, "Are you really homosexual?" Oh. I'm like, "Is this a conversation that's really happening?" <laughs> and that's actually a CNN segment. <laughs> Is Charlemagne gay? Charlemagne. Let us know. But look, okay, now in that person's defense, oh, you play up, a lot you. of gay. What? I didn't even finish. I do. You play a lot of gay games. You talk about it a lot. You did give envy a mold of your butt that had. You know what it is. So of course people and think that. Neil and then, can understand this. I think. But don't drag me. No, into this. listen, listen. <laughs> I like when somebody's uncomfortable, especially guys, right? Yeah. So for whatever reason. Gayness makes guys uncomfortable, especially in this hip hop yeah. space. Yeah, so I just think it's funny. I agree. That's a it's a whiter joke than a black joke. Like black, it's like not. It's like this is not. Fun. This exactly. is a uh, a tragedy. Exactly. What you're talking about. So you think that white guys play gay games more? They're than way black more. Guys? Yes, significantly more. Okay, like, I don't know what you guys do. I just, slap like, each other on the nuts. Yeah, just a little what? dick really? grabbing and and uh, <laughs> sending dick grab- pics. That's a that. I avoid. Thankfully, that was the one of my favorite. That was where I was more grateful for having black friends than ever. When I found out that white dudes were sending pictures of their dicks to each other, I know. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. no, that was happening. It was like in the oh eight oh nine. I'll never, you know I'll never forget it. How do you know that that was their? Dick? You don't. You can never know it's their dick. Ye. Right, unless their um, face is in it. Yeah, unless their face somehow. is in it. Yeah. Um, the uh, somehow. Um, so, so, uh, oh, so yeah, man. like that, that yeah. was, there is a lot of, there's like a more gay thing in the, in the white. Have you ever been uncomfortable playing like somebody did something to you? Like, so people have like slapped you on the dick and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it uh, ever- yeah, like po- it's more of a poke than a slap. <laughs> I just, it's like, come on, man. It's just like, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's crazy to me. Yeah, like come up with all that. Like, I don't need all, like, just come on, and stop it. And do you it. feel uncomfortable like... I'm not like what like I have a bidet. You have a bidet? No, I want one. <laughs> I have a bidet at my. I've had. Bidet, I've been in the bidet game since oh <laughs> six, and I got it. First of all, it's wonderful. They're not. You can get one. They're like uh-huh. they're, they're on the low end. I like, like them though. Two hundred, three hundred bucks. He can afford it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two hundred, <laughs> three hundred bucks. Uh, you can do this. Um, you can do by this. the way, you're gonna you're you'll get that money back over time. <laughs> Um, just Worth in it. confidence. Just the money to save um, in underwear. But nothing like <laughs> I I I have friends that will not use my bidet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Well, no, no, that no. I don't think you should use someone else's bidet. Well, that's a whole other issue. Yo, but they're afraid. Wild. They're for homophobic reasons. Oh, I thought you meant for hygienic no, reasons. No, like I don't want them to, but they let me know. Like I won't be using. It. It's like no, I'm way ahead of you. You won't be using. They do but, know it's a different stream of water every time that comes out. Right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. mentally, it feels like the same stream. Um, the but I, I, but uh, I like I don't have nothing happens when I, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, Does it have a girls, dryer? Does it have a dryer? Yeah, also? yeah. Um, it. I've never like I've had <laughs> girls do, stick a finger in my butt and nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, same. I wasn't like my identity. Like I was fine. <laughs> Everything I thought I was. It's just like all right, that was okay. Have anyway. baked had a lot of gay humor. Uh, did oh yeah the whole the whole prison yeah the whole prison yeah Yeah. the whole the whole fear that's more of like a homophobia thing but yeah like the you yeah you'll be all right do you ask for girls to put their finger in your butt or do you just do it I tell them Um, (laughs) in my business I don't ask for nothing ye Um, I no that's just a thing that happens and you go okay that looks like fine it wasn't like oh I found my new lifestyle it's just like okay and either way it's with a woman right. No, I just always wonder, do guys have to, like, tell you, like, because no one's ever told me, like, put your finger, you know, I like that, or... Oh, nobody's ever, uh, I've never told them, but they just, you know, uh, uh, they'll just do it, like, to mix it up. Yeah, you can't ask for it. I've never, I've literally <laughs> never gone, it, uh, excuse me, miss, I have a request. <laughs> uh, miss, let, should, can I see your hand, please? The third finger, that one, I need one knuckle. 
Um, one knuckle deep. Uh, I'll see you there. By the way, that is the logic, right? Guys would be like, yeah, you don't ask for it. If you ask for it, that's gay. Yeah, no, of course. Like, she well, just does it cool. I ain't no bitch. Yeah. I just enjoy having two fingers in my, my butt. Um, but, but also, when you get that's what I'm happy about with the evolution of like mental health oh. yeah. and and uh, oh, sex and gender stuff yeah. is that it's just like yeah, it's just a thing that you're into. It doesn't. It, it's not a definition. You and know, what I'm, about context, right? Because what's a colonic? I mean, not a colonic. Well, colonic yes. too, but also yeah. the colonoscopy joint. Yeah, that's that what they joint. do in a colonoscopy. They don't. I thought they do. I've never had one. What's the colonoscopy? What's the one? Uh, check you with the the one oh yeah, that's a. That's a rectal exam. Yeah, I guess. No, it's I, some, I thought it was something for cancer. It is. Uh, yeah, but they put you out. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh. Like you, they they roofie you. I knew you. Was gonna um, say. <laughs> no, yeah, they no, they you go under and then you wake up like, what, what, what happened? What did you do to me? Really? No, yeah, but they do put you out. It's the the Michael Jackson one, the uh, Rohypnol, or not the Rohypnol. Uh, what was the one that Michael Jackson would take every night? I forgot. Uh, when he died of? Yeah. He would do it every night, which what's crazy about Michael Jackson is he was putting himself out every night with uh, propofol. Propofol, yep. And, and if you and, watch and, the and This Lurism Is It Pro- documentary, he was on propofol every night for eight hours and he would wake up and still be the best fucking entertainer. And he's a he's just a basically a junkie. Up for this shit, and he and he's still like, "What am I doing?" And just goes. It's like amazing. Um, but uh, Michael Jackson, rest in peace. I'm here to promote Michael Jackson. <laughs> and um, Janet Jackson as well as Michael. yeah, Mike, the whole Jackson family. <laughs> um, uh, so so yeah, I'm not the stuff with the butt stuff. It's like, all right, man, yeah. you know, I've never put my finger in anyone's butt. Yeah, I don't think that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I just haven't. And I, I also, you seem like again, you hate to make guesses. But how aggressive, I don't feel like you're that, not wild, but you seem just like, oh, we're going to have sex. You should listen to lip service. I'm not a liberal. I'm a conservative in the bedroom. (laughs) Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say that. I think I do like regular stuff, but I do it well. But I've never (gasps) fingered anybody in their butt. And I also don't know, like, do you like go in and out, in and out? You just put it in there, leave it in there? Like, It's, uh, you set it and forget it. (laughs) Um, it's, uh, no, I think you go, I mean, the t- again, it's never, it's always like, uh, uh, I don't know. So I guess maybe you don't, I never get a sense of what's happening. I don't have a lot of nerves there. I think, I don't know what's happening where it just feels like something's going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I couldn't tell what is where. So you could live without it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like okay. it's not, it's like not a, if they outlawed it, it's fine. Like it's not. So you don't need it to be mandated. No, yeah, no, okay. no, 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 gotcha. no. It's my body, your body, your fingers, your choice. Your fingers, your choice. Um, <laughs> Unacceptable tour. It's at the Cherry Lane Theater right now in New York City, right, Neil? Yes, sir. Where do they go for tickets? It's probably sold uh, out. Unacceptableshow.com. Uh, it's pretty close to sold out. Unacceptableshow.com. Uh, I may extend if things break the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but How but long is it there for? Six weeks. Six weeks. And we just started yesterday. Damn, so. you got a residency. Basically, yeah, yeah, but it's like a real show, like yeah, real, yeah, yeah. like I got the uh, back, like I had to build a set and all kinds of stuff. I'm coming. Three yeah, mics. Wait, will you I'm come? Go will you come? It. Yeah, please. Yeah. Three mics yeah. is one of the best stand ups I've seen. Thank you. So I yeah. can't wait to see Unacceptable. No, it's it's uh, it's good. I like I upset myself last. Like I I like I like got emotional last night. Did you have to really? delay it? Like, was it supposed to come out earlier and do this earlier, and you had to delay? I was supposed COVID? to do it last year. Yeah. Right. Like had it was like ready to go. Had the theater, and then this happened. So thankfully, the jokes are all applicable and I was able to update stuff and the stuff that wasn't. Um, so uh, it's a pretty good show, guys. You won't be sorry. <laughs> Go check it out. It's Neil Brennan, the always ever entertaining Neil Brennan. Uh, thank you for coming, Thank my you brother. for having me. Come on. And I thank you for, for both of you. Like, it means... I see how few white people are on this show. <laughs> the whites, it looks like like, like the so HBCU. You, but how Ed many Sheeran. whites can talk good times, COVID, Ed Sheeran. butt stuff? Ed Sheeran, uh, Ed, uh, yeah. Gary Owen. Chelsea's been up here a couple times. Chelsea. It's a small, uh, it's a small list. Yeah. Not much. Post Malone. Post, Post Malone, Malone back in course. the day. Bieber, Bieber came here, Timberlake. They've been here. So that's a yeah. pretty good group. Of yeah. course, we've had Mac Miller up here before. God bless the dead. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, Mac Miller, good dude. 
Oh, you're right. Um, it's a handful of you guys. It's a handful. <laughs> yeah, we're great. Uh, we're it's pretty great. It's a pretty great group. No, but I'm thankful. Like I, I'm, yeah. ha, I'm, I'm, I'm truly. It me. It's uh, does not lost. I mean, you always have me on on common sense. Like absolutely, my guy, you. my guy. Always. I feel like we should get you like a bidet deal or something. I would love that. Like an endorsement. Neil Brennan. Uh, Neil Bidet Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> Go to bidet.com for unacceptable show tickets. Uh, thanks, you guys. It's the Breakfast Club. 